Live from the Rob Christensen Radio Network Satellite Studio, it's Jim and Rob over Analyze the Movies. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Jim and Rob over Analyze Movies, uh, uh, the, the home of the best chat on the internet and the place where we like to go beyond the review and dig into the craft the story, and the meaning of the films we watch today. And today we're going to be going, we're going to be getting deep into nobody, whoever nobody is. Uh, the Bob Odenkirk starring uh, film Nobody, actually shot here in Winnipeg, but never screened in Winnipeg, or at least not to the public. I'll whine about that some more later. But first, before we get into that, I want to take this opportunity to introduce my colleague, my the man with the most, Mr. Jim. Where the heck am I looking for? All oh, right, Mr. Jim Chaboyko. How you doing, my friend? <laughs> well, there you go. No, you don't even have that now. <laughs> Doing well, thank you very much. Doing very well. Um, I'm. Uh, what's the uh, What's the word I'm looking for, uh, Jim? I uh, well, as you may already know, <laughs> I perhaps got into it uh, with some folks on Twitter. <laughs> I know. What a shocker, right? Eh? Uh, yeah, so before we, before we talk about, uh, before we get into this, uh, flick, I want to tell you about my adventures on Twitter, uh, in the last week. And I've had a few actually, but I think this one's relevant to, to what you and I do, Jim. So let me, let me tell you the tale. Um, here's the, here's, so this is the tweet I read a few days ago. Uh, from the from the one ring dot com. Um, and of course, it's a bit, Jim, about the upcoming Amazon, the rings of power, which is sort of it's a prequel uh, set in the what the second age. I, you know what? The Silmarillion written by J.R.R. Tolkien, which wasn't really a storybook, more like a a, a fantasy history to his fantasy series and to his made up world. Um, this is the going to be like a mini series for that. Anyway, here's the tweet Elrond, the Herald of Gilgalad, who fought in the last alliance, is now a quote, canny close quote architect. Galadriel, who is who never fought in the War of Wrath or Last Alliance, is now a quote, commander close quote of armies. <laughs> it's the woke rewriting of Tolkien into beta males and alpha females. So, of course, uh, this may shock you, Jim, but uh, I might have reacted to this tweet. Um, <laughs> yes, this, um, uh, I, I've learned a new term. I've learned a couple new terms. Um Sorry, as I screw around with my microphone. Um, one of them is, <laughs> I'm a soy boy, apparently. Uh, but anyway, so, oh yeah. So anyway, I do. I, oh, Jesus. Of course, I've had you on mute again, because I'm a fucking moron. Pardon my poor language. Anyway, we're just going to keep going, because <laughs> I'm a big idiot. Um, actually, Jim, I'm not even hearing you for whatever reason. I'm not hearing you like I should. Just a sec here. Oh, for the love of God. Jim, say something. Hello, check, check, check. There we go. Sibilance, oh, sibilance. Yeah, 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 no, now you're coming in for whatever reason. <clears throat> and it's all, it's, it's the problems on my end. My bad. Sorry about that, everybody. No, it's okay. Um, uh, denying you uh, the greatness that is Mr. Jim Chaboyko. Uh, he was Sauron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, uh, where were, where was I? 
Um, you were called Soy Boy online. Yeah, so he's being called Soy Boy. Uh, many names, but first let's uh, let's talk about uh, my response to this tweet, uh, and then maybe you can judge for yourself, Jim, whether or not you know the the internet had uh, the inter- maybe you know maybe I am a Soy Boy. All right. So the the next tweet in the chain is my response saying I'm down with a badass Galadriel. I'm like I mean. I honestly, Jim, you know, it's, I really did. I was like, if you look at uh, the the way they have her dubbing up in the armor, it's not your typical fantasy fantasy armor, you know that, mm-hmm. you know this. It's like <laughs> basically a metal bustier. And <laughs> boy, garters! I didn't know they'd be so big in <laughs> in protecting people. Not her ass, but. <laughs> Anyway, um, uh, so I was. I was like, I, I was. I'm down with a badass Galadriel. Interestingly enough, Jim, the internet did not take kindly to that comment. Um, I and folks, uh, for those of you that are interested, I actually do have that. Uh, I do have the whole chain down. Like you can link. I, I link to my tweet and then you can see every comment under it uh yeah the 24 likes is a bit of a and that's great uh that i got some likes but there was a lot more activity a lot more responses <laughs> there about yeah well uh, uh here was the best one of them all jim and i i gotta admit i, I liked this response <laughs> both the best of the criticism it's like we know <laughs> Um, Jim, the, there was one, it was almost like a bundle of three comments back. Uh, mm-hmm. on the one hand, you would have people like out and out saying, you know, yeah, you're well, a soy boy, a, like every homophobic gender policing, you know, look at his soy boy, be, like a lot of like ad hominem attacks. Right. Yeah. And, and all you know, it's one of those things where, rightly so, you can't call someone an FAG or an HOMO, you know, but that's what they yeah. wanted. You can just, or that's yeah. the way I read a good third of those comments. You, you saw it. You skimmed the chain. Yeah, uh, yeah. The other, another third, though, and this, uh, maybe, I, I don't know if it was quite a third. I'm giving some folks the benefit of the doubt here. Uh, but the folks who are like, well, I always thought she was a badass. And I got to admit, I'm like, kind of, you know, you got something there. I, I still think you could have a good conversation about, you know, about it. Um, mm-hmm. What's wrong with seeing her in armor? Like, is it so bad that, you know, it's like, but but I kind of got that one. And I was like, oh, man, you got to. You know, I liked a few of those comments because it's like, yeah, no, you you do have a point. It wasn't really where I was going, but I I get where somebody could say, well, I just thought she was a badass. Why do you have to put her in armor to make her a badass? Um, but then there are the other, you know, tweeters where it was like, holy, uh, it, they, it, it's a bit of the homophobic stuff, the gender policing stuff, and protecting canon that this violates canon you know this dogmatic you know a part of me is like jim i'm like when did this book become a religion you crazy people you know it's all i could think about it's like that's nuts like I, and I know I'm I'm acting like I've never heard of the internet before. It's, what do you mean people overreact? Yeah. <laughs> but it was, I, I was really kind of, I was still sort of like, wow, you're all. That's nuts. Uh, yeah. You know, that, that nothing can be reinterpreted, especially in their head. You know, like this idea of canon is, I mean, it's like, okay, yeah, let's uh, let's bring out all the racist analogies in the work, you know, and yeah. we'll, we'll lean into that because it's canon, you know, get your head yeah, out of here, yeah. you know what. Um, and it's interesting, you know what, these folks are the same ones who think, um, oh, good word, Nadia win, not 
Star Wars? No, no, no. Still same, same world. Oh. Um, same world, yeah. Oh, for crying out loud. Peter Elf, Jackson's dwarf, films. Human? Uh no, uh what's her name? Liv Tyler's. Liv Tyler's. Oh, yes, yes. Arwen. Arwen. Arwen, thank you. You know what? They basically they had to give her more. And I remember an interview with her saying, Well, you know what? They realize it's like it's the 20th century or the 21st century, and there are no like th there's hardly any women in this in these they had to make someone more engaged in the story and so mm -hmm. they took this character and people love that character rightly so even though she's way more active in the movies and in mm -hmm. a way that was never implied or even hinted at in the books and uh, yeah. but all of a sudden this and it's all that woke agenda shit and and uh so it's this weird mix of the homophobes uh the the, the homophobes and the dogmatic uh, i'm gonna call them the canonistas i have now coined a term <laughs> and there then a go. few folks where i'm like again i'm like i think that's an actual sincere i thought she was a badass again i think there's a, a still a decent conversation to be had of uh well why can't we put her in armor anyway? Just to see, just to let that play out, see what that character might have done at a different time. I, I don't think that's yeah. a terrible thing, but I kind of, uh, I do sort of get the that that was a legitimate criticism on what was for me really kind of a half-assed hot take. It's not like I really went after anybody. I just, well, I'm okay with this. So anyway, there you go. There was my adventures with Twitter this week. One of my adventures. Yeah. With Twitter. <laughs> you know, and, and let's take a look, you know, your comment. Uh, what was it exactly? Like verbatim was, uh, oh, I wouldn't mind a badass. Here, let's, let, uh, let me, sh I will show you. Bear with me, my friend. Sure. But basically I, I knew literally, what you meant. And I think it literally I'm down with a badass Galadriel. Pretty simple, you know, <laughs> uh, and I think anybody taking that in good faith would, would see that as being, uh, I'm down with a different version of Galadriel, who is also a badass. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, maybe that requires a bit of reading into it, but uh, you know, I'm, uh, you didn't say like, "Oh, this will be better than that weak, palsied <laughs> Galadriel that we've all come to yeah. know." Like, I mean, it, it, it's I was such always a... thought she was such a softy and barely. Yeah. A... <laughs> it's like it's yeah. such an overreaction. Today, I I block some stranger i just made some gentle comment like you did and they're the, they gave me a super sarcastic reply i'm like i don't need this negativity if if uh if you know if that's how you react with people and, and i just yeah. thought you know screw this see ya so uh you know it, it doesn't surprise me but uh the funny thing is the second you film a uh, film version of a book you've got a new interpretation of it. You can't yeah. avoid it. There's no way to do that. So um, it's already, the movies are already a different version uh, of what Tolkien wrote. And then my last comment yeah. would be, wouldn't J.R.R. B. Tolkien be proud of the <laughs> overwrought legacy that he's left that started with stories for his children and now you have a bunch of people on computers screaming at each other. Yeah. And, uh, well, and yeah, especially so. that dogmatic approach. This is a guy who dealt like who knew what the trenches, what dogmatism and blind uh, patriotism did not yeah. to say that like it, in many respects, he's doing what I think a lot of these other people <clears throat> are doing is this, this idea of a, a, a forgotten past that, you know, but I, I don't know. You read his analysis, the way he, the way he talked about like in later introductions to the books where he was like, listen, as far as I'm concerned, uh, yeah, the, the forces of world war two, two would have treated, would have treated, uh, uh, would have treated the Shire shabbily on I by their side. That's what power does. You know, he yeah. was in no way, you know, Ah, this is the forces of good. This is the forces of evil in our own world. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think he, I do think he'd go, whoa, it's a story, you wackadoos. I say. <laughs> he'd fill up his pipe and go out to the garden. But that's interesting, an interesting comment, Jim. Yeah, there's, uh, if, if um, 
bad faith. Like I think a lot of people took my comment in bad faith. There was only, like I said, a third, and I'm being generous that I think took it in good faith, but still wanted to make the very legitimate, I thought she was. But mm -hmm. um, uh, but the vast majority were like, it's not the way it was in the books. And wait, again, look at the look at the original tweet. This is kind of nuts as far as I'm concerned, Jim. It's like the Galadriel, who never fought in the War of Wrath. I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, or Last Alliance. I vaguely remember that from the books and the uh, and the movies. Um, is now a commander of armies. And it's like the whole beta, like, I mean, that alpha beta thing where it's it's like how insecure and i was getting grief from oh. men and women on this and it's like how insecure in your sexuality are you that it's just any no. anything is just some hor horrible threat to them you know it's like whoa yeah Eesh. well I, I yeah you know what you're saying about negativity i mean the only reason i knew is because i I've got my notifications dialed so far down. If it isn't somebody I follow, like I, even if it's somebody I tweeted at, mm -hmm. I am not notified if they tweet back at me or respond or even like it. <laughs> I have to look. And for whatever yeah. reason, I was looking at other stuff and I'm like, oh, wow, that's a lot of, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Like it's kind of disturbing. So anyway. All right, there my friend, go. I think, uh, what do you say? Is it time to actually talk about the movie? It's movie oh, look time. at this. Maybe, Sounds you know good. what, before we do that, why don't we, uh, we've got some folks in the house, Jim. Folks in the house. Woohoo. Yes. Yes. Woohoo is right. Uh, first of all, oh my goodness, it's, let's, let's give a big Jim and Rob overanalyzed movies welcome to Richard L. <laughs> and oh, who's next? It's Katie Rich. Fowler letting me know <laughs> that Jim was on mute. Katie Fowler. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Katie. <laughs> and then, of course, our good friend who will be joining us next week on our big show next week, uh, Mr. Dra Brian, Mr. Dragon Movie Guy. Hello, DMG. Hey, hey. Um, DMG is also saying our video signal is going in and out. Yeah, apparently I'm having some uh, internet problems. Uh, it keeps, it's warning me, and then it's saying, oh, you got to up your stream rate. And then it's saying, oh, it's too high. And like, I. Ah, technology. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, as long as you yeah. can. Uh, oh, it looks like. Uh, the video is better now. Thank you, Katie. Oh, good. And then DMG says, uh, oh, just looked up the term. I suspect soy boy was the term that DMG just looked it up on the interwebs on the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Yikes. In caps with uh, two, maybe three exclamation marks. <laughs> yeah, I go. didn't. At no time did I think I was being complimented. <laughs> <laughs> I was not going. Ooh, I got I'm a shirt a soy made. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly. Although I wear it proudly downtown. You know what, Jim? If we do t-shirts, I am. That is going to be one of them. Hello, <laughs> I, <laughs> welcome to Soy Boy Central or some bullshit, some BS like that. Because brought uh, to you by Urban Dur Dictionary. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Urban Dictionary and internet homophobes everywhere. Uh, okay. Um, that said, yeah, let's uh, let's get mm -hmm. into the movie here. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take over, Jim. I'm gonna be that guy. Certainly. I am going to Point be blank. that guy. I am going to get into the. Oh, I'm gonna bring up the intro, which of course is gonna bring up <laughs> the countdown. But I'll take that off right away. All right, everybody, here I am. Okay, let us talk. Let's talk about nobody. Um, yeah, this 2001 film, actually shot here in Winnipeg, uh, is uh, starring uh, Bob Odenkirk. 
is uh, about a apparently about a docile family man slowly revealing his true na- his true nature his true character uh, after his house gets burgled by two petty thieves which leads him into a bloody war with a Russian crime boss as happens you know um, when you're dealing with petty thieves anyway it's uh, directed by a uh, Russian uh, Russian musician and filmmaker Ilya Nyshuler, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, written by Derek Kolstad, starring Bob Odenkirk, Connie Nielsen, Riza, Christopher Lloyd, and Alexei Serebyakov. Uh, also starring uh, Michael Ironside, Billy yeah. McClellan, Gage Monroe, Paisley Catarath, uh, both Gage and Paisley as uh, as uh, uh, Bob Odenkirk and Connie Nielsen's uh, movie children, Alexander Pal and Arya Mengesha, uh, the Ethiopian Russian bodyguard of the big bad guy played by uh, Mr. Serbiakov. Uh, yeah, so let's get into the social nutrition checklist here, folks. Um, of course, uh, let's start with a, yeah, let's start with the reframe stamp. It wouldn't have earned it. Uh, was it union made? Yes, it was. And with Winnipeg union labor. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what about the Bechdel test? Does it pass? No, it does not. In any way, could you call this a class conscious film? No, you can't. So that leaves us with a score of, wait for it, 25%. Which Jim? <laughs> I I'm gonna call just a big fat. We fail. should uh, <laughs> we should do an a- we should do an average. Like take all the 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 maybe yeah. Uh, just take a look at all the movies that we've done. Add up the the sort of the percentage. Yeah. And then you know divide by the number of movies and and figure out what what the average is. Yeah. Uh, maybe <laughs> that's something everyone I can, on a I can curve. Do. We could see what the distribution yeah. is. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you know yeah. what? I know somebody in data analysis <laughs> might be oh, able to help go. us with. Could be an individual in our chat right now, Jim. Yes. Um, yes, could be. <laughs> could be. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of what we're looking at here. Uh, before we go any further, folks, I do want to take a uh, shameless advantage of this brief moment before we uh, get into the movie anymore. And ask for, boy, oh boy, there's something wrong with my, uh, bear with me, you guys. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. No, it just doesn't want to. All right, everybody, if we can uh, quickly ask you, beg you for a like, um, uh, perhaps a subscription if you haven't already. And last but certainly not least, please ringy ding that bell. Uh, I should have pulled it out off my back like John McClane or something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Something crafty and fighty, yeah. fight movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, Jim, do you want to... Actually, never mind, do you want to? I, it looks like I'm basically forcing you into this. Why, sure. don't, you, why don't you start us off with a quick review? Sure. So uh, I uh, I'll just call up my notes and try try to act like I'm not reading off them again. Uh, all right, just bear with me one sec. So yeah, I uh, was uh, looking forward to this the uh, the Winnipeg setting, etc. I you know Winnipeg's filling in for any town USA basically. Um, the first three minutes I thought were really crackerjack. The first five minutes. There was, you know, uh, it was nicely filmed. Uh, it starts off with him in in the police uh, interrogation room, I guess. The lighting was all basic. Um, you know, he pulls something out of his coat. It's kind of, I don't we're not in the spoiler area yet. No. But, you know, it's sort of a nicely set up scene, kind of funny, kind of foreboding. Um, and I really quite enjoyed it. And even getting into the, um, there's, really basic uh, this part of the synopsis is that there's an attack on his house there's there's almost silence in the first five minutes like there's not much dialogue 
he looks at his son, his son's in bed. So they communicate, you know, non-verbally and he kind of goes, there's somebody in the house, you know, with just with the, the son says with his looks. And then, um, then our hero goes to take care of it. So I, I really quite liked it from there. Yeah. They, the rest of the movie, there's a, there's a certain kind of a, we can talk about this. There's a kind of a sloppiness to it. Uh, and I'm not talking about the fight scenes that are purposefully sloppy, which I quite enjoyed. Uh, there, there's just a, there's sort of a, it's a very minimalist story. It's very bare bones, but I could have used a little more. I don't need a half an hour of backstory or anything. I felt there was a one character that was sort of hinted at and then inserted in the, in the last act. Um, there's uh, there's an animal that sort of comes out of nowhere. The main antagonist sort of comes out of nowhere. Apparently he's this big Russian in town. So it, it, a lot of it sort of felt kind of slapdashy or almost like a fight sketch show not a comedy sketch show but a, a sketch fight show with sort of uh interconnected fibers that weren't all that strong uh the fighting was fun uh, you know enjoyable but I, I i didn't like this movie as much as i thought or as much as a lot of other people did there there are things that i did like about it uh uh we can talk about the politics of it ultimately i think these are the kinds of guys that you know where he's supposed to be our hero and stuff these are the kind of guys that I think probably would have killed Fred Hampton in Chicago, you know, like, so it's, you gotta, you gotta be not too proud of your skills there, buddy. There's a little bit of a self-satisfaction with this movie that I thought it had. And we've seen it in a lot of other places. I found the sort of the older male vengeance thing, whether it's a history of violence, it's Michael Caine's Harry Brown, which I thought was great. Uh, uh, there's a few others, John Wick, of course, which this writer wrote. Um, so yeah, I was, I was a bit underwhelmed. Uh, I like Bob Odenkirk fine. Uh, the producer David uh, Leach directed uh, uh, directed uh, John Wick. John Wick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that doesn't surprise me either. One of the comments I saw saw was the, the magic act of this guy selling the same screenplay twice. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so I liked it fine. Uh, but uh, we can talk about some of the details. Uh, and I and I thought it was entertaining. I wasn't bored at any point. It's a quick eighty six uh without credits but uh yeah ultimately was a little bit underwhelmed with the quality of the the story itself uh, um anyway on to you what did you think of it uh does any of that jive with you or myself jim i uh yeah i i i i i was like wow this is john wick right down to the maniacal son the gang of hoodlums around him except these guys don't even try and control him uh it was a competently made film um it, it mm. notwithstanding the i i was actually okay with the way he got into the main conflict was which is him against this russian gangster you know i i mean mm. I could see some people, I, I, and I kind of get where you're coming from there. It's like weird sort of steps, but I thought they did it well enough. Um, mm. The And we'll get into this later. I, 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 I'm I, going to hold my biggest criticisms of the film. Um, it's not the most original thing. The the competent man, I was hoping for some... Uh, a, a bit deeper of a... Cons of a uh, of a discussion about that genre, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe a comment on it. And it was only as I was watching it tonight, Jim, um, trying to, uh, you know, finishing it. And I was like, wow, Spencer International starring Mark Wahlberg for Netflix has a better take on the, has, a, has, has at least kind of a, a fun sort of, take on that idea of this uber male you know um mm. it has more criticisms of it than than this film does um mm -hmm. uh, so and yeah its politics are disturbing uh and uh, mm -hmm. you know what we'll we'll get into that later uh, otherwise yeah if you're you want to turn your brain off you don't want to think too much about what the film's actually saying because it's saying some pretty dark shit mm. um you know what it's a perfectly passable two hours but myself i mean i uh yeah i i 
yeah, the politics, the this celebration of violence, uh, just because somebody's got to be, you know, in a, a, a use of, boy, they spent a lot of money on their music. Uh, one great uh, thing about Gotta Be Me. Um, and it's like, mm. well, do you? Do you really? <laughs> Why aren't you in jail? Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's kind of, that's sort of my, uh, my take on it. Um, I think that puts us, I believe, Jim, this puts us in, uh, if I can find it, if I can find, I can. This puts us in there we go. the spoiler zone. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. <laughs> uh, Jim, do you want to? Actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's quickly catch up with the chat, and then we'll we'll get into the craft here. Um, bear with me, my friend. Sure. All right. Uh, just... uh, Katie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um oh dmg referring to my earlier comment about twitter <laughs> said you could always insult the guy back check out the soy sauce <laughs> all right that, that's pretty good <laughs> i don't know why i'm like i'm you know it's like oh what's dmg gonna say it's always it's always a pretty solid zinger like i'm you know well, well what is he saying now oh that's funny like every other time, or almost every other time. Anyway, all right. Uh, Katie Fowler upset that she didn't see Portage of Maine, uh, but they were awfully close to it. <laughs> um, actually, yeah. you did see Portage of Maine. It just not quite in the classic uh, sense. Um, I think as the Russian crime boss was walking into the club, not looking, not looking both ways well, to see oncoming traffic. And when he traffic. walks out of the club, when they yes, you know. Uh, we are in the Pick spoiler up, zone, yeah. but uh, Katie Fowler, my quick review: it could have been better. It, you know, it's a pedestrian kind of flick. Uh, a DMG, I believe. That's Bob, it. We're done. Good night, Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> I believe Bob, Mister Show, Odenkirk is street tough about as much as I believe sixty-nine-year-old Liam Neeson is is kicking uh, took us. <laughs> and Richard L., there was a glee in Carnage here that Hutch had that even John Wick didn't. And yeah, I want to get into that. Uh, we're, we're, I'm not, we're going to pin, uh, we're going to pin Richard's com uh, comment here because that, I, I yeah. Uh, he, he says, delight in nail bombs and other most gruesome ways to harm people. Yeah, the, yeah, I'm, we will come back. I want to come back to that. All right. Uh, so that does, though, Jim. Uh, I think now we've got to talk about the craft. Uh, do you want to start us on this? Yeah, sure. Um, I got a few notes here. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people are, are I, I did take a look at uh, some of the other reviews uh, just online. And a lot of the, the the sort of YouTube film community really dug this movie. Um, uh, they were talking a lot about um, the performances and stuff. And Bob Od Odenkirk's fine uh, in this. I think part of the thing is that it's a surprise to see somebody like him in something like this. Um, a lot of the other people, though, I don't think were given a lot to do. Uh, I heard a few comments about Connie Nielsen. I think she was... She didn't, I didn't even buy her as a real estate agent, which I think she is because she's, you know, she's got her posters on the, where he's doing yeah, his chin ups yeah, on realtor. the, uh, thing. yeah, yeah. And, and she, I didn't even get that realtor vibe. I just got worried, sort of constantly worried woman from her. Um, you know, I, I did, I was kind of more intrigued by the Ethiopian Russian uh, fella. I, I thought uh, he was kind of relevant interesting. to character yeah. or relevant to craft in what way? Like just in his performance. Oh no, I just yeah, yeah, that's right too. Yeah, yeah. Let's... But in terms of well, in terms of uh, performances, I just I, I I think a lot of I think this so fell on Bob Odenkirk that even Christopher Lloyd had a, had a few moments. Uh, Riza had a few moments. Uh, I, I felt that Riza's character was introduced fairly late, but uh, so I, I you know it was okay. Well, we the heard Russian, him over the, the radio. Lead... Listen, Riza. Yes, that's true. Riza costs money, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rizza, I got a flight of where? Riza ain't free. Yeah, I I didn't quite. Uh, and again, if we're talking about um, uh, if we're talking about audible conversation, I didn't really 
some of uh, Christopher Lloyd's lines came out mumbly, as did the Russian. I could barely understand what the Yulian character was saying, the mob boss, uh, for a lot of the time. Uh, otherwise, in terms of craft, I, I sort of dug the the downbeat color palette of, of Winnipeg in October slash November 2019, which is when this was filmed. Um, it was it was very kind of, you know, it, it was consistent. It was kind of grimy and dingy looking. Um, the there was an interesting thing that I've not noticed before. There was a lot of stock photography credits at the end. And it's because a lot of the bumper shots, the shots in between scenes showed some sort of cityscape. Yep. And I swear to God, I'm, I'm pretty good with cities. There was probably about seven or eight different cities that they showed. So I, there was New York in one. It, one looked like a coast, like a, a different coastal city. There was a river going through one, but you know, I didn't sort of, I thought that felt slapdash to me. There's certain things in the details, uh, uh, um, a lack of uh, attention to detail, but the most important thing here, of course, is the fighting. Another another bus fighting scene. Uh, this one is slightly Remember, different. Though, this was shot than Shang Chi. You know, separately and well before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah no, I and mean, I'm, I, like it was a good one, it, and yeah. it was it was one of those ones. A few years back, I think a couple years even before John Wick, maybe because of John Wick, they were talking about uh, the whole getting back to the basics for stunt work. Um, you know, not using the wire work that had been, you know, taking over things for the last few years, that kind of thing. Uh, and just getting real back to the basics, which is something that John Wick, which I believe was directed by a former stuntman, uh, you know, with that Leach, intended the to. Guy who, yeah. The guy who produced this film. Like it really yeah, it was you a know, former yeah. stunt guy. Yeah. yeah. Stunt. Uh, well, he was and, a stunt coordinator on, uh, on um, The Matrix. Him oh yes, and yeah, yeah. The well, writer, or not the right, like his co co director. Although they only credited one, but his co director, they two stunt coordinators, and then they got the yeah. and they got John Wick made, probably in large part, if memory serves, because they had a they had a star of sorts in Keanu Reeves, you know. So they got a yeah. a small, relatively speaking, a small budget for the time. 30 million bucks and made something that once again, Keanu Reeves on the cutting edge of reinventing action. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. The guy's Sorry. Got a nose I for it, but went on a little. Side no, 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 that's there. fine. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's relevant, but uh, so in, in terms of the fighting, uh, you know, the bus scene was sort of the one for me. I, I, the showdown at the factory at the end was more sort of weapon based, uh, you know, more headshots and that kind of thing, which is, which is fine. Uh, but I really quite, I thought that the, another, you know, some, someday somebody is going to do a series like they did with New York stories, four different directors. They should do four different bus scene fights, <laughs> just sort of <laughs> loosely, loosely, uh, uh, connect them. But, okay. so I thought this one was good, different than Shang-Chi, of course, but, hey, we only got um, 20 but minutes nice left, and so sure, nice and sloppy and, do. uh, and and crazy so uh i i quite like that so those are my notes on craft how about gotcha. you uh i'm i'm only gonna say one thing and i i i i'm thinking of katie fowler's comment in the chat right now craft sort of reminded me of percy movie you could tell it was a manitoba production she's got a, got a bit of a, a you know one of that smirky laugh uh emoji um myself I, it is a well-made manitoba production um, you know what, uh, I, I, I was in the old job when a lot of this was being, yeah, I think even when it was being shot or maybe it was out of the office already, uh, like it wasn't shot in 2021, wasn't even shot in 2020, if memory serves. It's like mm -hmm. years before that. 2019, it was the last concert that I saw was Morrissey and they were closing down gotcha. Main Street that night, yeah. October, before 2019. That, um, yeah. oh, okay, then yeah, you know what? I, I may have been around when the movie was being talked about when they were scouting him, and then I, I had left my role. But regardless, uh, very much a, a made it, but you know what? Still a feature. Like it was well made, you know? Oh, yeah, was yeah. It perfect. No, you can see where the budget, like you say, you know, a lot of stock photography. They, um, the, you know, they really did pick the parts of Winnipeg that worked and then just did their best to kind of, okay, we'll go into any generic suburb. 
you know what? Yeah, it was perfectly a perfectly fine made film. Uh, that is interesting about uh, Connie Nielsen, uh, and I, I'm going to comment on that in story. Uh, uh, and why don't we? You know what? I'm going to just take advantage of it Move and on. let's jump to story. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, let's talk about Connie Nielsen's character as a way to, you know, uh, I think the reason we never saw her as the as the the competent realtor is like in the end they wanted and we are in the spoiler zone folks in the end they did want them to get together they wanted they w didn't want i don't think they wanted connie nielsen to be emasculating uh uh hutch um i yeah. don't think they wanted that i think they wanted her to be more sympathetic um you know, she's kind of a, she's a, she, they're both kind of sad sacks in the beginning. Like, um, mm. it's all kind of uh, weird. I And this is not, the, I'm not praising anything here. I'm more just kind of thinking the they didn't want her to be that, well, she's the one who's running the show. And when will he get his mojo back so he can bring his family together as, as, as any good alpha male should do. Um, mm. I really suspect a lot of those earlier tweeters fucking love this movie um for all the wrong reasons um, i just want you to get your smile back she says in city slickers <laughs> this is pretty much city slickers isn't it i just figured it out <laughs> close <laughs> you know um yeah i i mean as far as the story goes it was perfectly it, it didn't show us anything new other than because it's barely a revenge film. Like, he goes to do revenge, but it really is about a guy who's like, I have been holding myself back. You have the kickoff in the act where he's literally play, praying for the bus to stop. Stop the bus. Mm. I gotta be me. And then the song comes yeah. on, and you, you get an idea of what the movie's about, uh, what it's really about, which is about this guy, uh, you know, getting to be himself that he's been restrained and hidden and repressed and he just wants to be who he used to be the auditor he used to be as opposed to the emasculated blah 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 he is now mm -hmm. uh, the boring suburban dad um and so the way they got there, I thought was actually pretty good. I liked the moment with the two petty thieves and the the bit of a it's it's his saving the cat moment, even though he's pistol whipping a guy. It's his yeah. It's his moment to kind of okay. He is not so he may be desperate for blood, but it's got to be the right blood, you know. Like he's not a sociopath. He's not a sociopath. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> you know. Um, well, yeah, no, or, no, no. Or, yeah, but yeah. For, from a story perspective, yeah, they wanted to, they wanted to yeah. establish that, and so yeah, like I mean, to some parts of it, not make sense. Sure, like you know, Riza and uh, and uh, and uh, Christopher Lloyd, uh, Doc, Doc Brown, <laughs> <laughs> Winnebago full of guns going to Mexico. Yeah. You know, it's like what. What? Why? Sure. Okay, sure. Because no one's gonna pull over a creepy old guy and a black man in a big. No, no. one's gonna look in that vehicle. They'll be just come on in. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think actually, as far as story goes, like the meaning is where it gets really dark. But as far as story goes, it's like much like the production of it, perfectly serviceable. Uh perfectly fine mm. um you know like i mean a, a solid enough although you're not going wow there was a twist but like you said jim we, we've seen this all before and i don't think they were trying to do anything unique with the story other than more celebrate mm. the ideas behind the competent man the vi the competent violent man um, which is yeah. more of a meaning thing. What uh, what about yourself? You know, there's there's a couple. It's when you got to those story elements that I that I quite liked the movie better. It was bookended by the scenes in the interrogation room. So yeah. 
uh, with the cops post Which fighting, post everything. Scenes. Super solid scene, and and it had a texture to it. Uh, you know, with the bare lighting and the and the you know just the the tension in Some the room with him and the two cops. costume work by Winnipeg's yeah. own Patty Henderson. Um, oh, nice. Who was nice also uh, she was uh, recently at Can. Uh, the Cannes Film Festival with, uh, what was it? Flag Day, I want to say. Another Manitoba. Oh, made it and Sean Penn. With Sean Penn, yeah. Like Penn's right movie, on yeah. the floor there. Yeah, it was kind of wow. cool. I think that's, that's kind of cool for a Manitoba thing. Anyway, sorry, Jim, oh, yeah. I, I rudely yeah. interrupted. No, the bookends. no. Yeah, so, yeah. so I like the bookends, and there, there's even parts of it that I sort of wish more of the movie was about. Uh, there would be scenes where he would be lying with somebody who's mortally wounded, telling them a story. And then he would look over and they've died. <laughs> As a father, I can appreciate that <laughs> kind of uh, sentiment. Oh, this yeah. one's a little bit more of an extreme one. But there's there's also a monologue about a man named Alan. It uh, was that's a little bit of a glimpse into on, his past. On that past. moment, it was a great way to, oh, we're going to get an explanation. Oh, explanation's over. Great way to get out yeah. of it. Oh, you're not listening. Yeah. I, that was a nice bit. It was a nice scene and a nice moment. Sorry. Alan. Yeah. But no, just the Alan monologue where he was going to cap somebody and then he decided not to. And then he followed up years later and the guy had totally cleaned up his life. I thought that was a beautiful little monologue. Yeah. It just for me, it was the the, sort of the connective tissue of the story. It it didn't feel organic. It just sort of felt sort of thrown in there. So if that had been done a little more carefully, a little bit baked into it a little more, I I probably would have been better with it. But uh, yeah, that's money. Those are the elements. Oh, yeah, yeah in DMG. I just, comments those are the movie. elements that I quite quite liked a, a, yeah. about it. It when, when it felt more like a story than a series of fights, that's when I liked the movie the most. When I you think. got a little more, oh, something's going on here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. DMG says uh, they spent sixty million on it, which is f all nowadays. Like especially with a name like Odin Kirk, any of the other names, all the money we could have spent yeah. on good music. A good 70s. Like, I mean, it's certainly, uh, I enjoyed a few of the music cues. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I don't know about yourself, Jim, but uh, I, I did. I enjoyed I'm, a few of the music cues. I was yeah. going, oh, that wasn't cheap. That was expensive. That said, um, yeah, if they had more money, they would have shot that scene. That would have been yeah. the prologue scene. You know, the, mm-hmm. yeah, that would have been the prologue scene. The, okay, he's, and then 18 years later or 10 years later or whatever, yeah. you know. Oh, um, yeah. What, the one thing that didn't work for me in the story, one more thing was you got the impression, although he's some CIA killer, hitman for years, but you get the impression that uh, his wife was somehow like, involved and i there was like a an early scene like just at the beginning of the second act he's come home from his ah finally i get to breathe again i just yeah brutally maimed several men um and there's like this moment between them where you know it's like yeah she's done this before she's helped him out and it's that they're starting to come back together which is kind of nuts uh but it it's that it also from a story sense, I think there was like more of a character revealing moment, but it didn't make sense. It's like, so is she part of the, cause later yeah. on in the, it's not even a, uh, uh, a hidden room, a safe room. It's the whole goddamn basement and the house has mm-hmm. all this gadgetry. And it's like, Jesus, Connie, you weren't aware. Come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. That so was that a bit mixed. I thought that, yeah. I don't know if they had landed on that. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. In terms of music, just quickly, uh, I'm kind of tired of It's a Wonderful Life being used uh, ironically, but I have to say, Pat Benatar uh, screaming Heartbreaker yeah. in the middle of one of those uh, car chase scenes, that was that was sweet. And I, it's, <laughs> yes. it's only times like that you're like, maybe I haven't appreciated this song enough uh, <laughs> in the past. Like, that was a really nice, that was yeah, a and it was an older car, right? So. Tune, yeah. Oh yeah, it fit yeah, and yeah. it fits Winnipeg in a weird way, right? Like I mean, there were moments yes, where yeah. Winnipeg looked great. 
grimy city 92 great. <laughs> 92 yeah. city yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> howard manshine it's one of my favorite yeah djs of, a bit of our lives a bit of time. <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah. okay we we gotta keep going here i did want to highlight a couple of comments um uh, dmg looking up movies shot in winnipeg across the universe uh, the, uh evan rachel wood jim sturger's beatles movie was shot in the peg um i don't remember that but i'll look, not, I'll look, at, uh, I'll look that you up. did not create uh the peg as a nickname for winnipeg uh, but <laughs> good try um richard l the peg is a legit nickname and then he goes on to say capote is a good movie mostly shot here uh, also, yes. the assassination of Jesse James. Uh, the city, the urban portions were shot here. The rural stuff, the out of the city stuff was shot in Alberta, if memory serves. Um, what? There's a couple others that have been solid, solid flicks uh, that have been mm -hmm. shot in Winnipeg. Um, uh, you know, even a couple of perfectly serviceable productions that I worked on, one of which I met uh, Ms. Patty Anderson on. I'm, I'm talking there about her go. like she's this she's a star she's a star in my mind star <laughs> behind star. the camera <laughs> uh, okay molly ring ringwald wedding one was the big one from my <laughs> youth when she was in town and everyone <laughs> yeah. just about fainted collectively yeah. so yeah yeah no it's, ooh. <laughs> all right uh let's move on and let's talk about let's get into the meaning um jim with your permission i'm gonna start this one off yeah. Um, oh, I'm going to get rid of that nonsense. All right. Where are we here? Meaning, 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 meaning. Well, apparently, I've denied myself that. Oh, there we are. It'd be nice if we had the chat back. We can bring that back. Um, there we go. I think, and this is why I really would, if I was in a, a star rating system, if we were doing that, Jim, I, I couldn't, I, could, I can't recommend this film in part because it's such a dark it really is it's it it's exactly what all those yutzes all those twitter yutzes get off over this idea this idea oh. that to be the suburban dad to like there's a moment early in the film that sort of illustrates the philosophy of the filmmakers is that moment where the cops said you didn't even try and hit him and it's Whereas, every, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, we can get into, you know, the Winnipeg Police Service and, uh, you know, we could, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, no responsible cop says, fight it out. That's what you want to do. Yeah. No, if you can get out of it peacefully, get the out of it without getting your head bashed in, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. Like it, it's all those, oh, excuse me, terrible belch. Um. But it's right there. And all of a sudden, once he actually, like, brutally maims a bunch of people, all of a sudden breakfast and there's the families together. And, you know, it's never, uh, who are you? What is going on here? What are you? Not just who are you, but what are you? And there doesn't seem to be any kind of, and I don't think it's being ironic or anything. There's no, it really is a celebration of that idea of, of the beauty of violence um, that you need, you know, like not even a, it's not even a justification for this guy, the father. Oh, I remember it's, it's always been awful. Like I could never get back into it. I, I faked life like there that they're only truly alive when they're killing people. And that is the heart yeah. of this film. And it's like, and I've met these guys, I've met these guys on set and there's a part of me that's, I always kind of like, how can you guys be so alpha? And let's, you know what? It's a discredited, even by the guy who came up with the term uh, alpha male, it, it's, it's totally discredited. It has no application, no actual academic application. But holy crap, you see this a lot on set, the stunt guys and that. And it's like, you, you fucking play make-believe. Give me a break. You're not out mm. there fighting the fight. It's why stunt guys get off around soldiers and, so, you know, and, and uh, cops and actors, especially those alpha male types, get off around cops because they, they just love it. And it's almost like a, 
kind of like the the Twitter ding dongs. It's like, are you are you worried about your masculinity? Is this it? You you think you're you're doing a what's another thing? I'm sure a lot of people wanted to call me in in that tweet thing. Fairy, you mm. know, you know, it's in their head, and mm. you know, this is like, and it's like, this is just weird. It's it's not even weird. It's kind of gross. It's you know, so at the end of the film, you're like perfectly serviceable, competent man, not vengeance because it's it, again it, they never that what what I think the Hello Kitty uh, bracelet is found by the kid going oh it's here <laughs> you know yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it kicks off this waves of violence that solve nothing other than Bob Odenkirk's middle-aged suburban ennui. And that's yeah. fucked up. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's yeah. uh there there you go, Jim. That's my uh that's my take on it. What about you? Well, you know, and understanding and if you we've look at uh, it got too- like minutes left. <laughs> yeah, um, the whole thing, you know, is sort of based around, you know, uh, ma- emasculation and, and uh, you know, it's just hammered home with that montage at the start of him pouring yeah. coffee, waking up, pouring coffee. Not only does he not Job drive himself to work, he bus. takes the bus yeah. like a, <laughs> the like a beta. Next anyway. door with, with the really hot yeah. muscle car, because it's an old yeah. school muscle car, like. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's feeling so, small in the pants here. But the whole thing both is hinged them. on the both the, the whole thing is hinged on him sort of not delivering when his family was under attack when the reason why he didn't go after these is he would have slaughtered them in front of his family, right? Yeah. He knows he and that ended up because they have a small child, they were, you know, obviously broke into the home to I, I'm guessing to pay for the health care because the child, the baby the had United an oxygen States. mask and it is the United yeah. States. Yeah. So, so had he killed them both, the, you know, whatever, the, yeah. there would have been, a, a, he, you it know, it's a good a thing that he movie. didn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But he still has to make up for that sin of not killing the burglars. Right. And that's, that's, you know, and, well, and the FBI, well, like not even the uh, sin, well, Jim. Like he wasn't yeah. going. Oh, I I've sinned. It's the I can't now, and I want to be me. Yeah. He's pre- yeah. Stop the bus. Stop the yeah, bus. That's the point. And only just yeah. to return to who he was. Nothing to do with the sin yeah. of not killing them. That's not considered a sin. I think in the in the meaning of the story, it's more the yeah. oh, what well, he is. That is a reasonable. That there is a no, we don't kill again. He's got to look like he's not a sociopath. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, listen, a, a one uh, comment here. Well, first, I want to go back to Richard's. Um, <laughs> Richard, interesting. It was directed by a Russian, and they still went uh, went yeah. the cardboard Russian bad guys. Yes, they did. Um, I actually even thought at times when I was watching it, Jim. Uh, more to Richard's comment where it's like, wow, there's, but even that fuss, uh, the, the, our current fascination with Russian gangsters and the more extreme, the more violent, the more mm. ridiculously family loyal. Cause again, that's right out of John Wick, the yeah. idiot that they will blow up their whole operation for the murdering a partner. And then, Hey, we all keep his money. It's like, why aren't you all just shooting each other just to take it all? Like that doesn't make any sense. That was a bad story moment, actually. And, um, and I like the fifty-seven-year-old brother with a twenty-year-old younger brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of whatever. And this goes back to Richard's comment: the glee in carnage. Yeah, and yeah. There's a glee in it because they're celebrating the violence. Um, he, uh, ladies, like uh, what's the uh, Katie says? Agrees with Jimry's story liked the beginning up until the bus fight scene. And then I thought it was sloppy. I, I, I don't know. Was, bus fight scene came in just shy, uh, right around 25 minutes. Um, the rest, it, it, was it sloppy, Katie, or was it just not, you're like already tuning out because you're like, well, I'm not going to see anything interesting after this. Kind of curious. Please, yeah, uh, comment in the chat. Uh, the shift in getting revenge from the thieves to the bus stop boys didn't fulfill redemption. Yeah, I don't think there's a, there's not a, a 
it's not a redemption narrative. He's not trying to be redeemed. He's trying to be released. Yeah, he's, he's, there's no redemption here. Like, there's no need to be redeemed. He's like, mm -hmm. he gets to be, the bus guys get to be, I get to be violent. Because that's just, I've been holding back. I am like Elsa, not Elsa. Who's the, uh, no, Elsa. That's the, uh, she's the Snow Queen in uh, Frozen, yes. right? Yeah, she is I, I Elsa. So. It's, I gotta be me or let it go. It's the same goddamn scene. <laughs> He's gotta be violent <laughs> just as Elsa needs to go, look, I can make ice do things and build a castle out of ice. Same fucking movie. Not yeah. the same movie, but and the city same slickers. moment. Same moment, yeah. City <laughs> slickers and no. Uh, uh, Richard says the entire movie comes out of him maiming those bus hooligans out of frustration, and his response was totally disproportionate. Yes, it's oh yeah, like it. Well, it was all like by then you're like, yeah, okay, this is the movie we're in. Um, yeah. Katie, uh, oh, a further to redemption doesn't fulfill redemption really, so it didn't leave me longing for him to succeed over the russian yeah there's no that's what's wrong with this film yeah, on us on a on a meaning level there's no one mm -hmm. being redeemed here because he hasn't done anything bad he, he's more just been held back and now he gets to finally life opportunity to be me <laughs> a fucking maniac all right uh we yeah. gotta wrap it up folks so let's jump into before we get Let's get out of the meaning here, and uh, I'm going to throw it over to Jim. And Jim, why don't you give us a quick description of what we're uh, what we're doing next week? It's going to be interesting. All right, so it's kind of a well, it, not kind of, but it is a does it hold up? And what it is is we're taking a look at a couple Oscar movies, uh, Oscar winner and contender from the 1980s. Uh, uh, Rob and I each selected one uh, to take a look at. Uh, I decided because I've actually wanted to see this again uh, recently. So I, out of all the movies in the eighties that were nominated, uh, I decided to, to say, see if uh, Amadeus held up um, with Tom Hulse and winner uh, all uh, kinds of made in people. 1984 one. And of course in the 57th uh, Academy Awards in 1985. And uh, the and Rob uh, selected it as as his uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. So I, we're gonna sort of do a head to head. I did, and if I can find the uh, oh, oh yes, I believe I have it somewhere in here. The other one, one, movie. one didn't. There we go. Here we are. It did make it in Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> Yes, I and 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 for those who uh, long long term fans of the show know, we already did a does it hold up on Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, what Jim and I are trying to go after here is, in a way, a convert a discussion. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark was a Best Picture nominee uh, in the eighties. It of course didn't win. Um, it's a 1981 film, so for 1982, I think it lost against Chariots of Fire or something. Might have been. I can't remember. Anyway, what we're going to do is kind of say, okay, which holds up better? And I'm going to maybe not argue, but defend, explain why I think uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark has more, it, it holds up better uh over amadeus uh but of course uh, uh we encourage you to watch both films and chime in with us as we ramp up to the oscars on uh, march 27th last sunday march 27th yes yeah uh okay uh with that out of the way why don't jim uh let's jump into uh whoops sorry damn it Sorry. The director. Are we giving are we giving uh Ilya a pass or a fail here? Uh, I'll give him a, a um passing grade mostly for the bus fight scene. Yeah. I'm I'm I think I'm into bus fighting now. I don't know why, but anyway. <laughs> um 
it takes so two were, movies but the anyway. best lines of the last few months uh on twitter was that boss fight deserves its own movie <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Just laughs> referring of course to shang chi um yes shang -Chi. awesome bus fight uh awesome <laughs> yeah you could we should we could do a whole series of just on bus fight films. All right. Uh, yeah. For myself, I'm going to give Ilya a pass as well. And a solid pass. It is, uh, it's, it's a competent film. Like a, I, I'm, I'm reminded in a weird way of Nomadland. It, it, this is in no way near the level, but you know what? Much like I could say, yeah, you could see uh, Chloe Zhao's talent here it's like yeah it's he's a he's, guy's a competent filmmaker and who knows maybe we'll see more and better work out of him um I, but for my i i gotta say though jim for my final thoughts it's yeah i couldn't recommend this film it's such an ugly heart it's such an ugly mm -hmm. heart to this film i'll be like unless you're a big fan of this genre i'm like yeah they're better just go see john wick for all intents and purposes, the same goddamn film, but better. There's tragedy. There's pathos. There's, you know, yeah. there, there, there's, there's, uh, I know it's just over a dog, but still it's like, you feel like, yeah, no, that's things, things have to happen. That poor dog. Um, yeah, yeah. You also feel that there are consequences for his actions. This guy is just, oh, we're going to buy a new house with a new basement and he's going to go back to his old life and the whole family's going to be happy because he's, you know, John Wick faces consequences. It's not, oh, it'll all be fine. Um, yeah. What, what about yeah. you, Jim? A couple final thoughts. Um, I went back and counted. Uh, there were 53 henchmen killed in the factory. Just for the, this is what I bring to you as a service. So I counted, I may be off by a few because some of the people that were thrown by grenades, I didn't count. But if there was a headshot, I counted them. So I counted 53 dead, including the mob boss. Well, and how many did he kill in the Bank of Montreal? And yes, folks, uh, a lot of the scenes with the yeah. what's the big stash that Millennium. they allegedly move around? What? Oh, the Auk Bank or the, the o o Bank, whatever the hell. They're, all back. They're yeah. kitty that they move around because yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Because <laughs> criminals so, haven't heard of Bitcoin yet. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, these, uh, yeah, the uh, like there was just. I bet you the body counts well north of a hundred because it was just oh yeah just yeah. constant and it's like how many yeah. well I guess it is New York so New New Chicago Detroit yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah. so fifty three okay. against three and the three win but uh, so there's that there's also just a real quick uh, thing is that my dad had me watch a bunch of Death Wish movies in the eighties I still don't know why sort of reminded me of this but if you'd like something along these lines uh from my memory michael kane and harry brown which is a 2009 yeah. movie he had a little more justification for it it was one of these old guys with skills and he t takes on a bunch of young punks that are terrorizing the neighborhood harry brown much better uh, yeah, much better absolutely yeah there are better films in this genre and they don't mm. quite although who knows maybe a a deeper conversation could be had or it's like, Oh, listen, uh, most of the fans, they just want to, they want to see the violent killing. This film may be just being more honest about it. Yeah. Not an unreasonable, you know, uh, uh, position to take. All right. Uh, folks, I do, we, we do. The chat is, uh, want to grab a few comments for the chat before we wrap up, wrap yeah. up. Um, here we, uh, okay. Katie, uh, yeah, so didn't leave me longing for him to succeed over the Russians. Yeah, it's like, this is he, uh, well, we got Russian bad guys. I guess they got to die. Richard L. says, was surprised we saw no cop cars or fire engines in the movie until the sirens at the very end. And really only hear sirens and what lights. Yeah, budget. <laughs> uh, yeah. DMG brings up another interesting discussion of who is socially acceptable to make the bad guys in movies. Yes. Like right now it's easy to hate on the Russians. Um, although I got to admit if I was a Ukrainian national, I'd be like, yes, 
Yeah. You know, like, hey, I, but we, we, oh, go ahead, Jim. I was just going to say, that's another thing. You're mentioning your, your, your action on Twitter this week. It's a funny week to be watching this after all the sort of the violence and the occupation of Ottawa, what's happening in, in Ukraine. Uh, yeah, so Jim, it's sort of, I, I, I sort of wonder if that would have. I could still see that American, that monstrous American flag at which, Broadway in front of our own fucking legislature. And it's like these assholes so ridiculous. are still here. And that's, oh and I want to say to all our American uh, viewers, all our American friends, we're not. It'd be like, imagine some wackadoos who want to overthrow the government through a Canadian flag on their thing on one of your state capitals. It's like, what the hell? This isn't, it's, it's, who are these nut jobs? Gone. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. I'm sick of these. Assholes. So it's a weird week to be watching yeah. such a, a violent movie with such, such a, such a violent kind of atmosphere. And such a celebration uh, but... of violence, you know, as, yeah, as a yeah. way to, to, to be you. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Richard L. Raiders sure holds up better than Temple of, the Doom, Temple of Doom. Well, that would have been a lot easier contest for me. Um, okay, uh, okay, so uh, it's sort of a video game movie in terms of body count, uh, kind of like John Wick or zombie movies. Ooh, that's a good one. Or yeah. old martial arts movies. Uh, Richard L. Great comment. Yes, Katie Fowler. Three guys were killed in a row by one bullet. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Classic. Uh, Richard L. Springfield. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that reference is, but that's a good one. Oh, maybe when I was doing the Detroit Angeles Field. Oh. <laughs> Spring <Yeah>. New. <laughs> All right. DMG, wrapping it up. Richard L. Temple of Doom has the excuse of being filmed during Spielberg's divorce. Um Ooh, and T beginning love uh love of the yeah apparently the way like he's still him and Kate Capshaw are stuck together ever since. So he probably yeah. thinks Temple of Doom was a great film. Um DMG a celebration of violence would be a great movie title. It, you know, yeah, a celebration of violence. All right, uh with that out of the way folks out of the way you are the best chat on the internet what the heck am i saying you are all awesome anyway uh again folks next week uh as we uh say uh next week we are going to be looking at amadeus um and, and seeing how it holds up against uh raiders of the lost ark two really different films uh, but it's it, we're gonna have a great time. Uh, come by nine forty five Central Standard. Oh, yes, still Central Standard Time, mm -hmm. Universal Coordinated Time minus six. That will change the show afterwards, though. We will be on the thirteenth, March the thirteenth. March the time Oh, right, my yeah. fault, my bad. That would be March. Oh, well. uh, thank you, Jim, uh, for that correction uh, before I really blew it. Uh, yeah, what else can I say? You know what, uh, folks? By the you. way, oh, two yeah. great movie posters as well. I just... <laughs> oh, just yeah, at them now. you're absolutely right. Yeah, uh, a time when they still, a lot of them still made their own type styles. You yeah. Know, there'd, there'd be, the graphic artist would actually make the font. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. DMG, rock me Amadeus. And on that final comment, uh, yeah, folks... Again, thank you all very, very much, and uh, have a great rest of your well. What's little? What little is left of your weekend, depending on where you are, it may already be done. Uh, Jim, I'll see you in.